Howdy and welcome to the 10-Week Bible Study. I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs, and I can't wait to jump into Revelation 8, 7-13 today. Well, welcome back to the 10-Week Bible Study. This is week five, day two of our study of Revelation. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God. Speak to us and fill our hearts. Flood us with the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. I'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Revelation 8, starting in verse 7. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down to the earth. Okay, pause right there. I have no idea what that means. I don't know how you mix hail and fire and blood. I don't know how hail and fire mix together because fire would melt the the hail or the hail would extinguish the fire. I don't understand that. This is, um, there's, there's, there's definitely a supernatural thing going on with the seals and the trumpets and the bowls. All there, there's something supernatural going on. Um, but with the, the seal judgments, it seems like there is a, a human component, right? With what was especially the first four, there's a human component to all of that that could be explained away if you wanted to. By the end of the seal judgments, we see that people are hiding themselves in the rocks and begging God to stop and saying, you know, kill us instead of, you know, subjecting us to this. So there's a supernatural component, but there's a very much a human component. Um, hail and fire mixed with blood. I, I don't know how to imagine this away where there's not some supernatural component to this where, I mean, it is so distinctly different than what our experience is in the natural created order. I don't know how to explain this. And I don't know how, I mean, there's, there's, there's been for ages, people attempting to say, well, you know, the, the giant locusts that come out of the earth, that's helicopters or this, you know, there's all of these things, right. As we go through all of the judgments, what is this and what is this actually going to be? And people have postulated and theorized, And I will say that I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing to think, oh, well, maybe that is a helicopter. Maybe this is a this and maybe this is, you know, I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's bad to engage our imagination where I think that people get off is when it's like, okay, no, this is definitely this, right? When they become very convinced in their own mind that, no, this is what this means. In reality, I have no idea. Nobody else has any idea what this means. Um, we'll know when we see it for sure, but how on earth hail and fire is mixed with blood. I don't know. And I don't know how that burns up a third of the earth. Maybe what we're talking about is, um, you know, meteors, meteorites striking the earth. You know, they're mostly ice, they tell us. And so that would look like hail as it's breaking up and they burn when they come through the atmosphere. How that's mixed with blood, I don't know. Um, but but essentially, um, you know, again, that's, that's theories that people come up with. That's, I don't think a terrible theory, but still it doesn't explain how it's mixed with blood. And so I don't fully understand this. I just know that we'll know it when we see it. And something about this burns up, um, a third of the grass. Grass has got some different meanings for people in different times. Um, we, I think in, in modern Western context, we think of grass as what's in our lawn and, you know, isn't that terrible, especially people that are very distanced from agrarian realities, you know, grass is what we have in our lawn. We spend all this effort to water it and maintain it and mow it and all that kind of stuff. And listen, I mow my lawn. I like having a green lawn. There's just something pleasant about having a green lawn, but I don't really think that's what we're talking about here. Um, green grass, <laughs> is what feeds the animals, right? This is the food that our food eats for the most part. Cows, goats, sheep, whatever, they're eating the green grass. And so when a third of this is gone, a third of our ability to raise livestock is now gone. 
Um, I think that's primarily what we're talking about. And, you know, a third of the trees, a third of the cities or whatever. I, I don't know all of the implication of what all is being burned, but it's bad. You know, a third of the trees, we've now lost our ability to rebuild stuff with, with easily available wood. Um, so there's, there's all sorts of implications here as far as what this is going to look like. Um, I also want to say that uh, these trumpet judgments, they're going to come very quickly now and just without a whole lot of fanfare. It's like boom, 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 boom. The first four are just, man, um, we're just getting it, getting it straight. Verse eight, the second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea would turn into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Um, so again, I mean, this sounds like some kind of giant asteroid or something, you know, the big thing that they say killed the dinosaurs, whatever. It sounds like something like that. But I don't know. I mean, a giant mountain being thrown into the sea, I, I just don't know how that's going. I mean, you know, the, here's the thing that my mind goes to when I think about this is all of these, you know, doomsday secular prophets that talk about, you know, what killed the dinosaurs. They say, you know, is a, a giant, um, asteroid or whatever that, that strikes the earth, uh, just off the Yucatan peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico, off the, off, right off the coast of Mexico. And there's this giant crater, they say, and that's the thing that basically caused this kind of nuclear winter that made the dinosaurs go extinct, you know, Maybe, maybe not, whatever. I don't know. Um, but but the idea in kind of popular culture and science is that there's going to be another one of these strikes someday. And that if, you know, if that happens, it's it's going to have the effect of maybe killing most of everything on Earth because you throw all of this water and debris and all this kind of stuff up into the upper levels of the atmosphere because the impact is so great with a, a piece of rock that big that it just, it, it creates this catastrophic effect on planet Earth. That's what they say killed the dinosaurs and they think that it'll happen again. So maybe that's kind of what we're looking at here. But the interesting fact about this is, is that John is telling us that when, when he sees this happen, it's a third of the sea, a third of the ships, um, you know, a third of all of this is getting destroyed. Not all of it, not all of it. And, and I, I want to point out, you know, when we go from the seals to the trumpets, we go from a quarter of things, all of the things in the trumpets have to do with a quarter of the earth. And here we're looking at a third of the earth. Um, there's a teensy bits of bit of math that we'll get into here in just a second uh, that makes this uh, make sense. But, um, you know, that's basically kind of the the numbers we're dealing with. Um and, and so it's interesting, again, I don't know how the sea has turned into blood. People say, well, that's red tide. And, and maybe, again, there's all of these theories, there's all of these postulations. And I think they're all valid to kind of like, as a mental exercise, think what would this actually look like? In real life, what would it look like to live through this? And, and, and I think that's a good exercise to go on. What I think is unhelpful is when we decide, oh, well, it's definitely this, and this is how that's going to happen. And, and you can get lost in a world of deception doing that um, because there's, there's you, you, if you can convince yourself that unknowable things are, are very certain, and I don't mean like we'll never understand this. When we see it, we'll know it. But unknowable things now, like nobody who's being honest can tell you they know for sure. How does the sea turn into blood? Um, how does only one third of the sea creatures die and how are only one third of the ships destroyed? Um, how on earth does that, does that work? Again, people can come up with theories and ideas. I don't know how, uh, with any scientific knowledge and predictions that we've ever made and, and looked at this, I don't know how that works. It, every, all the doomsday people, again, it's, it's kind of an all or nothing kind of thing. It's, it's like either we go and we do like Armageddon, the movie, and we blow up the asteroid, you know, the, the comet coming for Earth, uh, or we all die. And so, again, I don't know how this works. 
Um, and maybe that's just my limited knowledge and understanding of, of how something like that can hurt. But the, I guess the popular science and all of that kind of stuff that's been pumped into my head through the years says it's kind of an all or nothing thing. So how is it just one third? I would say that the Lord's a lot more precise with his judgments than, um, you know, popular science would lead us to believe. But there you go. Again, I don't know what this is going to look like. We just know it's going to be bad. And, you know, so we've got a third of the ocean going ships are now gone. That's, I mean, we've, we've seen just when, you know, a small fraction, just here in the last few years, we had uh, the Suez Canal was blocked. And there's been a couple of times where the uh, Panama Canal has experienced um, a slowdown. And we're talking about tens of ships maybe a few hundred ships worldwide that get kind of held up for a little bit of time. And it has catastrophic consequences to world economies. When goods aren't able to flow, you lose a third of the ships in the way things have worked. Now, this is catastrophic. Any way that you slice it, what's going on here is absolutely catastrophic. Verse 10, the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that have become bitter. So here we've got another thing falling from space, essentially. And again, I don't know that that's the case. This is the one kind of for certain that John is telling us that it's a star, meaning it is a heavenly body. It's something from, from space that's falling to earth. The first two, uh, it's kind of unclear. But when, when an ancient person says star, they're talking about a light in space. So that could be a comet. That could be any number of things. It doesn't mean like an actual star. This is, this is, we can't superimpose our vocabulary on theirs, their vocabulary, anything that lights up in the sky. That's obviously not in the atmosphere. That's out in space. That's a star. Planets are stars to them. Uh, planets were, were called wandering stars because they kind of move uh, through the, the period of year through the field of fixed stars um, you know, there's, there's, they, they, they have their own nomenclature and we need to not superimpose ours on theirs. So this is for sure something coming from space based on the way that John is explaining it here. But then it, it, it's sulfur. I mean, wormwood is, is sulfur. Uh, the fact that it's called wormwood instead of sulfur, I don't fully understand that. Um, but, but we're, we're to understand that it's basically something sulfur based. That's, that's the implication here. And, uh, that it's, it's going to fall on the fresh water of the earth. I don't know how something falls on a third of the fresh water, but it's going to basically make all of a third of the fresh water, uh, sulfuric and, and salty. And it's, and it's actually going to kill people when they drink the water. And then I mean, this, again, this is going to have drastic consequences in all of these things. It never tells us, is this a geographic third of the earth? Is it like, you know, there's a giant meteor and a big circle and it's just one third of the earth. The other two thirds that aren't close to that are okay. Is this an evenly distributed one third and the other two thirds are evenly distributed? I don't know. Nobody knows that. How does, how this works? Not a clue. All I know is it's going to be un, unpleasant um, that the Lord is, is pouring this out on the wicked of the earth. And again, there is more of a supernatural element to this than with the seals. And so if you're inclined to say, oh, well, you know, these are natural things going on. Now we're starting to say, hmm, this God that I've mocked that I say don't doesn't really exist this isn't looking good for me, right? There's, there's all of these people. Now, the people that have been crying out for justice, they're understanding what's going on here. And to some extent, they're like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to see that here in a little bit, why they would be saying things like that. Uh, verse 12, the fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars. So the third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light and also a third of the night. Now, 
I have no clue how this works. How does a third of the stars disappear? You know, I don't know how any of that works. I understand the heavenly bodies and how they all move. And if you've been through probably like third grade science, you have a very clear understanding of how the universe works to some extent. And for this to happen, I don't understand. Is it this is some was one of these things that hits the earth? Does it slow the rotation of the earth or speed it up or something to where now days are shorter or different? Or I don't know. I don't understand that. Or is there something now that like is blocking the light of the sun for one third of the day? Like maybe the moon is stuck in a fixed orbit position and it's just blocking a third of the light. I don't really understand how on earth any of this is possible, but I believe it to be true because even Jesus himself is saying, listen, when, when the stars cease giving their light, he's talking at least in part about this. He's like, don't freak out. I'm telling you now that this is going to happen and it's all part of the plan. So when you see that, understand that it's me doing it. And especially specifically, it's me doing it on your behalf. Not against you. So don't freak out. Don't lose your mind when these things happen. He's talking to believers. Jesus says, don't lose your mind. Don't lose your head when these things happen. Watch for me. Understand that the time is near. The thing that you've been crying out for, my return, is very near when all of these things happen. So Jesus is saying these are going to be terrifying events to everyone else. But he says specifically to his followers, his believers, he says, for you, it should be exciting. It should excite you that the moment you've been waiting for is almost at hand. Verse 13, as I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. So much like the first seven seals, the first four are very related and the last three were very related. So it is with the trumpets. The first four have some relation, third, 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 third. But now the last three are going to have some relation to them as well. And this angel is calling out, or uh, this this eagle <laughs> that's speaking is calling out, I should say. And he's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're going to, we, most people call these the three woes. The last three trumpet judgments are considered the three woes upon upon planet earth and we're going to see very quickly why they are woes to the people of planet earth for the 10-week bible study i'm your host darren hibbs and i can't wait to see you next time well thanks for joining me today on our study would you like and subscribe to wherever you're watching this it really helps more people find out about our broadcast and my heart is for more people to fall in love with god and his word 